Hello everybody, it's Aaron from Go Grab a Bicycles and why I'm missing Pennsylvania, right next to Reading, PA. We are gonna be troubleshooting the Pivot Shuttle SL. Comes with the Fatsua Ride 60, really light motor system. I've ridden this myself, I have one in the shop. Absolutely fantastic, lightweight, 37, 38 pound e-bike. Absolutely love it, but a customer came in as they should because we are a pivot dealer and we are certified to repair Fatsua motor systems and have all the software to troubleshoot it. So I figured why not make a video about how we're gonna troubleshoot this bike and how we're gonna fix it. So the customer came in and said they hit an object and lost power. Now I kind of already know or have a, I suspect what's going on, but Whenever we get a bike in, we go ahead and ride it outside, and sure enough, there's no power. We get some flashing yellow, but it's not really yellow. It's kind of off-white with Fatsua. So we get a flashing light, which means there's either there's a sensor connection problem with the speed sensor, or there's an issue, maybe a uh, connector is slightly loose in the motor. So no matter what, we're going to probably have to drop this motor. But before we do that, we go out and test it and validate it. Yes, we're getting the flashing light. Yes, there is no power to the system which sucks everybody hates that but luckily the bike's only 37 pounds so you can still ride it home and not be dying with those 47 pound e mount e mountain bikes so what's the first thing i look at well let me show you so i immediately go to the speed sensor and right here validate that there's a magnet still connected to the rotor uh, because if that magnet gets damaged or it gets knocked off then yeah, you're gonna lose power because the system needs to know how fast you're going uh, for calculations and safety precautions. And then the other thing we do is we just look inside and make sure we still have the speed sensor right here on the inside connected, and it is. But we can see there's taken a little bit of damage right on the inside there. So next step is we're just going to hook it up to the computer. So as a FATSUA certified repair station here in Reading, Pennsylvania, we have the software, the advanced software to do the troubleshooting. So we're going to connect it right up here to the top and give it a go and run through the testing on this to see what the software says. Okay, so we just connect a USB-C cable right to our FATSUA controller right here. And uh, as you can see, the lights are on. And then we come over to the computer and we have the advanced toolbox data. And uh, we're taking a look at our advanced toolbox. We can see our system is up to date on our bike. There's only 164 kilometers here on the bicycle. Uh, our toolbox is up to date. So we don't need to do a firmware update because sometimes we got to do that. So we're going to go into the diagnostics uh, tab here and just go ahead and start our diagnostics process. Um, and we're getting warned that this is going to run the motor and stuff for us and diagnostics is beginning. Okay, it's asking for a controller test, so we're going to go ahead and hit the controller up, to wake it up, switch it up, switch it down, and inside. And controller works. If we had lights, it would do a light test. And then now we're going to do the manual torque sensor. So pedal at 90 degrees, hold the brake, depress the pedal, and the torque sensor works. See the numbers jumping around. And then uh, we're going to start pedaling, manually pedaling. So we get to over 30, 30 RPM of cadence. And I let go. And this system's actually going to run itself. So we hit continue. This is the automatic drive unit test. So there's a ghost. There's a ghost in the bike. It's really cool. And then we're gonna get a diagnostics here and finished with errors. So let's take a look at this. And like I suspected, it's finished with errors and its speed sensor is not working. So speed sensor not working means something happened to the speed sensor wire when uh, the person hit something. Unfortunately, that means I have to drop the motor. So we got to drop this motor. We got to use some tools to get this motor down and out. The battery is internal, the motor's on the back end. It's not terribly difficult, but we got to take pieces and parts apart and actually disconnect the rear triangle so we have enough room to get the motor out and then do the actual swap itself. So for tools, because we're using a uh, 
like a rotor crank may or may not need a Shimano hub tool, uh, a T, we got a T30, uh, a 10, an 8, and then we have the lock ring uh, for, the, for the chain ring on the front to get the lock ring off. So let's go ahead and take it apart. And let me walk everybody through this. So sometimes with the rotors, uh, there's an outer plate here and you have to, you have to kind of disconnect the outer, uh, outer ring on these rotor pedals. Uh, this one we don't, but when you use rotor, you may have to unscrew this, reverse it, screw it back in because this bolt's going to help pull the, uh, the crank arm off. But I don't think we got to do that on this. Yeah, we don't have to do it on this. This this will kind of pull out that crank arm. So in this rotor thing, we don't have to reverse that thread, that uh, lock ring on the top. So there it is. Crank arms off. We're going to take this piece off right here. See, is that a five? Nope. Probably a four. There we go. There's a bolt back here. Oh. Got our Fatsua lock ring tool. There it is, and that's what keeps your chain ring on, chain ring off. And next step is we got three bolts on either side, but the problem is, is the motor is going to be in the way here of this bolt system. And I still got to get the tire uh, out of the way. So I'm going to remove the tire and then we'll drop, uh, we'll take this, we'll probably take this bolt out right here. And uh, we're going to reposition uh, the bike up. All right, got the wheel off. So you're going to need some room in here to get this motor out because the motor actually kind of goes back up in here. So we got to disconnect the rear yeah there we go that rear connector off love seeing all the anti-seize grease on here and with that disconnected we should be able to move this out of the way just like that just enough let's see what is this t30 got t30 We've got three sets of these. And there we go. See the there's these arms here, you gotta get this triangle out of the way to drop the uh, motor. And there she is. I see lots of grease in here. We'll clean that up and re-grease that. I mean, the motor's out, might as well do some maintenance while we got it down, uh, since we're charging the customer for dropping the motor anyways. And uh, this is your cadence sensor here. So we're gonna just disc, you know, and I love seeing this, like the, the connection pieces on the Fatsua system and even the Bosch systems are really, really good. I mean, they're waterproof tight connections. You don't see that on Amazon e-bikes at all. So the quality of work is just fantastic. All right, so I just got a chair and a bucket and just kind of rest the motor on top of there. Uh, do have to be careful of any pieces or parts falling out. There's something that did fall out of the, uh, near the screw unit that I'll have to kind of push back in. But now all we do is we just got to put something on this end pull the uh, cadence sensor through and then use that same piece of string or whatever to pull the new one back through. 
There we go. You see, I got a little string on here, and I'm just going to pull this through. There it goes. All right. Not easy internal wiring. <laughs> All right, with speed sensors, there's different lengths. Um, this is a large. I don't know if we have a large. Let's try a medium. Let's see what pivot's using. There's not a... Oh, it is. It's medium. For a size medium bike, is it? No, nope, size small bike, we're using the medium. All right, brand new sensor. We're going to run it back through. And then, uh, yeah, I won't show you the pain of me running it back through. We'll skip to the part where I'm connecting everything and then getting the motor back on. Actually, the string system worked pretty good. I got it through in like, like five seconds. Okay, so from here, I'm just gonna reconnect the cadence sensor, get the wheel back on, get the back triangle back connected, get the Fazua motor uh, re-put back on, and then we're just gonna run the test and see if that solves our problem. All right, so we got the bicycle assembled again, and uh, you got an open little compartment underneath the motor. I forgot to mention that to get the wires back in because it gets very difficult to shove wires back in there. So uh, just that's what those extra bolts are on, on the sides to open up the compartment. It's really where you drop the battery out, but we're gonna run another diagnostics here and see if our new speed sensor uh, works. Hold the connection up, down, down inside all right torque it i'm gonna go to the nine o'clock position and torque and good and manual pedal get it over 30 rpm cadence yeah move your hand continue there she goes Nice. And we are successful. <laughs> no cadence error. So the, uh, or no speed sensor error, not cadence. No speed sensor error. And yeah, it's fixed. So I'm going to take it for a ride and then I'll call the customer and said, because the weather's great this weekend, they can get back on their wonderful, beautiful Pivot Shuttle SL with the Fatsua 60 ride, uh, ride 60 motor and be out on the trails. All right, so if anybody has any questions, you can put your comments in the description. The great thing about having this software is now I have a report. I can download that report and email it to the customer, and I'll save it on my desktop as the shop. It has a serial number, everything on it, and we have a record of her bicycle and the maintenance we did and the work we did here. So thanks for watching, everybody.